Jenny, it's a privilege to be able to connect with you this morning, and I'm excited because we're talking about your most recent book, Clout. Uh, and uh, first of all, what, what inspired you to write the book? Yeah, thanks, Tony, so much for just the opportunity to hang out and connect for a few minutes. But um, Clout really, uh, it's called Clout, Discover and Unleash Your God-Given Influence. It's really a bit of personal story meets um, business and church leadership example because it was, a, it was a bit of my journey of trying to understand what is this, I've always had this heart for leadership, I've always had this passion to help influence others, but really what's underneath that, what's inspiring that, what's, you know, and, and so Clout became this kind of overflow of the things that I was wrestling through as a young leader trying to make sense of what are the things that are holding me back and hindering me? What are the things that I need to be doing? Some of the hard work that I need to do to be a healthy leader. So Clout was kind of birthed out of that whole personal journey. That's great. And so why, why is this book important for leaders, particularly church leaders? Yeah, I, you know, I think this book is kind of the starting point for leadership, in my opinion, in that, um, you know, for so many of us, and especially I think for those of us in ministry, we often run to leadership opportunities, particularly in the church. You know, we, as soon as you step into a ministry role, you're starting to be volunteering, you're starting to influence others, kind of ushered in leadership positions pretty early, even if you're a volunteer leader. And, um, but oftentimes there's some heart work that we haven't done. You know, we haven't really kind of understood a little bit more of how we're wired, how God has gifted us and where to lead from those strengths. And so, um, you know, I think into helping influence others and we don't do some of the work of our own self leadership. So that's really what I'm challenging folks to do in clout is to really pause and lead myself well so I can lead others better. That's good. In the, in the book, you write about some clout killers. Yeah. Uh, can you tease us a little bit on what those look like? Yeah, yeah. And I, I talk about seven clout killers. And it's things like fear, jealousy, scarcity, pride, control, you know, the, the ugly stuff that we don't really want to talk about. But what I found in my own life and as I talk to other leaders is that so often one or two or sometimes all or in different seasons, you know, different ones will impact us. But they really hold us back from leading from a healthy place and really leading from just a secure and confident place in who we are in Christ. And so I unpack each of those throughout the book. And really, I call fear the front runner of the clout killers. You know, fear is the one that kind of influences all the rest of them. And so if we can kind of wrestle some of those things to the ground, I think that we become more aware of them. They don't go away. But we at least become more aware of them. We see when they're starting to hinder us. Just this last week, I was sitting with my, uh, my boss and my pastor and saying, okay, fear is totally, you know, like sabotaging me right now in this area. So help me walk through this. Help me process this. And just that ability to see it, to recognize it, to acknowledge it and say, this will hold me back. This will, will hinder me from leading well if I don't recognize it and deal with it. I think just positions us for better leadership. You know, uh, uh, you and I have some, had some opportunities, doors that God's opened up for influence, for clout. And I'd be curious to hear from you, Jenny, your perspective on how do you balance uh, being faithful and taking those steps through the open doors that God's creating and, and then at the same time not trying to create the platform for ourselves. You see what I'm yeah. saying? It seems like yeah. there's a delicate tension there. And you know what's funny about that, Tony, is I, I was on a – phone call with a friend last night and was having that very same conversation of saying, okay, how do I steward this responsibility that God has given me and walk through those doors and, you know, uh, respond to the influence, the clout that God has given me and not, and not cross the line into pushing my own agenda or my own desire for opportunities. And that's that ego thing, you know, that kind of it works with particular and uh, I don't know the answer, me, but that's a like ten that I always wrestle. But I think that um, I feel I, I can tell when I'm going to a place of striving. You know, when I feel like all of a sudden it's not a natural overflow of who I am. It's starting to become this stri striving, this drivenness that. Um, becomes a little bit borderline obsessive. And when I feel myself going there, I know that it's time to kind of pull back, 
um, to kind of reflect, to, to open my hands and say, okay, God, it's yours still, you know? And I think for me, that's kind of one of those um, tangible things that I do a lot of times is just that idea of open hands of when I start to put a death grip on the things that God has given me and I can, you know, and, and that's, I, I recognize that um, I'm starting to control and manipulate what he's entrusted to me rather than just going, okay, God, give me wisdom to guide this where you want me to take it, help me steward it well but not try to manipulate and control it. So uh, uh, put yourself in the shoes of a young leader, kind of taking their first steps. Give, give that young leader some practical first steps that they can uh, engage to you know, become more proactive in how they're building their influence and building their cloud. Yeah, you know, um, uh, first, I always want to so you just lead up you need about sometimes that means and communities putting the accountability also make sure you've got great people who are speaking into your life holding you accountable um so that's first and then um you know i think we all long for influence i think it's god designed i think it's part of how he's wired us he's wired us for community and then for those of us who are leaders he's wired us to want to invest in the lives of others but a lot of times we kind of jump ahead and want to influence people that are probably beyond where we need to be going right now. And so, you know, for young leaders, I would say, what's your current sphere of influence? Who has God placed around you? And for all of us, that starts with our family, our friends, our coworkers. You know, um, a lot of times we subconsciously will think that leadership you know, we need a title and a position and a number of people who report to us and, you know, this hierarchy kind of idea. And really influence is all about um, strategically investing yourself in the lives of the people around you right now. So how can you pour into the people that are near you? So if it's coworkers, if it's friends, what do you have to offer them by way of your gifts that helps pour into their lives, invest in them, and, uh, and so I would just say focus there. Instead of aspiring to a circle of influence that's kind of, you know, way over here, start where you are with the people in your circle of influence right now. That's great. Jenny, you've been through a recent transition yourself, and so I'm curious, are there any fresh learnings uh, that you're experiencing now as far as your influence is concerned, finding yourself in this recent transition? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's been an interesting dive. I, for those of you who aren't totally familiar, I moved from a church in Nashville to a church out in Menlo Park, California, the Silicon Valley area. And, uh, you know, similar sized churches, but different in, in a number of ways. And, um, and you underestimate just how much time it takes to build trust and relationships. And um, I've been super fortunate in my new place that, you know, people have been very accepting of me and um, welcoming of me being a part of the team. But it just takes time to earn influence, you know, and so you've got to do that by, um, just digging in and getting to know people and investing in them. So looking for the ways to just pour into other people's lives and get you into culture. Just got to kind of And so being in the trenches people and help solve problems and figure things out. Um, has been really good for me of kind of going back to some of the basics of ministry and and uh, just jumping in with the team and kind of learning what they're doing and understanding their roles. Um, so lots of learnings, but um, most you know, most importantly is just really um, understanding and valuing individuals and learning to build trust and relationship with them has been key. That's great. Well, Jenny, it's always fun to get your perspective on leadership. And so if folks want to continue to follow you and your writing and your thoughts, where can we send them? Uh, jennycatron.com. J-E-N-N-I-C-A-T-R-O-N.com. All right, Jenny. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Tony.